Okay, final speaker of the day is getting set up. Um, thank you all for staying here all afternoon. This has been, this has been really amazing and fun. Um, the final speaker, as soon as I saw Katie's uh, a submission, I knew that we had to have this one. Uh, she's always great to bring down the house. So um, Katie's worn many different hats over the years. She's been a software developer for many languages, a sysadmin for multiple OSs, and speaker on many different topics. I think she flew in from Europe like less than 48 hours ago. Um, when she's not changing the world or in an airport, uh, she enjoys cooking, making tapestries, and uh, seeing how well various application stacks handle emojis. emoji. So if you build a web form, she will stick emoji in it. Uh, and today, she's going to talk to us about a right stitch up. So welcome, Katie. I don't have a clicker. Does someone have a clicker? Yeah, you want one? Yes, please. Uh, where did it go? Is that it? No, that's Chris's. That's mine. Is that it? There you go. Yay, clickers. I'm a professional. There was far too much giggling for that joke. Yay! Okay, hi, I'm Katie. A long time ago in a conference far, far away, I was a young little techie nerd and my very first lightning talk I mentioned that I did tapestry work and I mentioned this project that I made a couple of years ago now. Um, this is one of three giant tapestries, like 80 centimetres by 50 centimetres. Um, and I don't have them here to show today because I had them auctioned off to raise money for pie ladies in Portland last year. And this is the wonderful Lynn Root displaying these massive tapestries. Um, how I made these back in the back in the back in the day was a proprietary free sort of not really Windows software kit where you give it an image and it would output a chart or a pattern that looked something like this and then you went ahead and you stitched all the individual pixels because automation doesn't exist in the tapestry world unless you get like the looms and stuff but this is uh, sort of like cross stitching sort of like half stitching but I'll get to that explanation a bit later so in this talk many many eons ago uh, I had no slides and I mumbled something about if you know anything about image manipulation, colour setting, cross stitch charts, if there's any FOSS software out there, please tell me. Otherwise, I will make my own and present it here next year. That was in 2014, it's now 2018. Um, you know, estimations. Um, so, <laughs> according to my own rambling how many years ago, I have three problems to solve image manipulation colour setting and cross stitch charts. So, image manipulation. Turns out that there's this really cool software thing called Pillow, which is the Python imaging library, which is this really nice uh, interface that you can use to do image manipulation in Python. It's almost as though it's named after that. Um, they have this function called getPixel, where you import your image and you say getPixel and it'll tell you the RGB and alpha for your uh, image if it's in RGB and because loops are a thing you can go around and just get all the colors for every single pixel in your image like really quickly which is great. Um, color setting is the next issue because uh, let's learn about floss. <laughs> DMC is a company that was started in around the 1700s uh, in France and they make floss. You might see these kind of setups around your Linkcraft or your Spotlight or something. Um, and what they have is a whole bunch of different colours um, for floss, which is the really thin stuff. And here's some I prepared earlier. This is some of the cranberry set. And these are like really tiny, fiddly things. I have some in my bag if you want to see the difference because I don't work in floss, I work in wool. Wool is a whole lot bigger, a whole lot chunkier, and it means that uh, with your uh, fabrics that you use, normally you have, say, 14 or 16 counts per inch. I work in 10, which means that the little images that you start off with get really big. But the problem is, oh yeah, so you've got the big ones and you've got the small ones. Uh, in cross stitch, you go cross to fill in the square. In half stitch, you just have to go half. So that's why it's called half stitch. And technically, I don't do cross stitch, I do half stitch. 
but people get confused when I say half stitch, so I just say embroidery, tapestry, kind of, names, pfft. Anyway, if you want to convert between your floss colours and your wool colours, there is a totally official PDF that has the pixelated logo of DMC on it and everything, where you can take your cranberry colours and the floss numbers and then convert them into wool which means you get something like this. And for those data scientists in the audience, you may have noticed that there's some missing bits because that is the entire set for cranberry in floss and that is the entire set for cranberry in wool. There is some missing colours, which means that it's really hard for me to be able to translate all the cross-stitch charts that are originally always in floss into wool, which is annoying because even the totally not free Windows software only works in floss and not wool. So, oh yeah, so there's like 50% more colours in floss. I don't have my speaker notes up, sorry. Um, so that's one problem. The other problem is that if you want to go from a proprietary colour code into RGB, that's a, a, a small, small problem um, because computers don't really understand proprietary uh, floss colour numbers. Um, officially, there's no mapping that exists. <coughs> so anyway, there's uh, 453 different <laughs> RGB colours for floss and 293 for wool, um, which means that we have out of the how many, 65,000 colours in RGB, we only have a certain amount of colours to play with. So we need to reduce down the picture to only the colours that we have physical wool to represent. And this is where Pillow comes in, again, because there is this wonderfully under-documented function called Put Palette, which we can take an image and a predefined palette of a bunch of um, sets of the RGB colour codes that we had before, and we can convert a starting image into an image with just the colours that we have available, which is really cool. And you can take that further and you can reduce it down to say just 16 because every one of those little schemes of floss costs a dollar and a bit. And so if I get to use less colours, then that's great because it's cheaper. So we can do something like this with the 16 and it changes from something like this to something like this. Now you may notice this kind of uh, artistic representation that is very much uh, GIF-like with the reduced colours, which is why I prefer to work with uh, pixel art instead of real life images because I don't, I'm not a fan of this sort of style, others might be, but I like to work in uh, more distributed colour palettes so you can't really tell when you're picking something that's a little bit off. So another problem, 256. Uh, 256 is like a magic number in computers and the put palette uh, function earlier only accepts palettes up to 256. So we have to reduce our 293 colours into 256. So how do we do that? We use math. This is a really cool mathematical function which is a heuristic to determine the closeness of colours as per the human's eye perception, which is really cool. It keeps on getting updated all the time. It's like a version from 1974 and a version from 2000. And there's a whole bunch of really interesting information on Wikipedia, but I've only got a few minutes left. So luckily, because Scikit is and NumPy are awesome, you can just import this function and you give it the two different sets of numbers and it'll tell you the distance between them, which means we can go through our entire colour palette and we can see how close and how far the colours are apart, which means if I go right to the really, really close colours, which, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Like that projector is showing pretty much what I'm seeing. And yes, they are different uh, colour displaying mechanisms, but in real life, these colours are so close together that I can just discard one and just replace it with this other colour. And for those who noticed the wonderful spectrum of cranberry earlier, they are so far apart. You can imagine how close some of these really, really close colours are. And that's fine, like this, these kind of colours were created in the 1700s before uh, 256 was magic, so you know. Um, last bit, cross-stitch charts. I thought this would be the hardest bit, but it turns out that there's, there's this wonderful piece of tech called Span, 
which means that with enough CSS, I can just output in a loop a whole bunch of spans. And then if I use box shadow inset, I can get the little grids happening, which means I get experiment 626, which I've just made public. Um, it is a little project where you can take your image and it will output a HTML cross stitch chart for you. So this is what it outputs. It's got a wonderful uh, legend with the number of stitches you need and the colors and the name. Um, and that's really helpful so you know how many skines to buy. And it has the same thing as I was using how many, how many years ago, which has got all the little grids and all the colors and stuff. And it's got little uh, Unicode symbols so you can tell if you can't tell the difference between the colors, which is great. Um, so, oh, my, my demo's up there. Could I have a wonderful assistant to bring down my demo, please? This is Sweet Sale. This is by the same pixel artist, Paul Robinson, who made the uh, Pokemon tapestries from earlier. So, if I take this PNG image into my software and I run, it's very persuasive. It knows how to do all the color manipulation and everything. It's a reference to Lilo and Stitch, I'm sorry. Um, if I run this command, I get a chart. And then with that chart, oh yeah, with that chart, I've also got a new feature in 626 where you can do a pre-rendered thread representation. So it looks kind of like what the final output's going to be. So you can kind of tell what's going on. It's underneath your hat. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can take that chart and I can stitch it and I end up getting this. Yay! Yeah, like the autom there's no automation here. It's just me sitting in front of West Wing and just stitching. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there are practical applications. If you use QR code, QR code is a Python library that will output you a QR code of um, whatever string you want. And if you pass that image into my system, you can get a scannable QR code that you can cross stitch. And I thought this was kind of cool, and so I tweeted about it. It's like, hey, I just snapped together these bits because I didn't make QR code, and I'm just like, oh, this is kind of cool. Um, people thought it was really, really, really cool. So because you all are terrible influencers, I have that now. Um, Guazin.com slash QR, where you can enter in your string and you can get a QR-generated code, and then you can stitch it and have all the fun with it. Um, so that's my talk. I have references and slides and demos and yay. <laughs> and possibly time for questions? Yeah, sure. Yay, does Russell have a question? <laughs> yes, where's his hat? Somebody quick, have a question before him. Now, I have seen there is commercially available software. Yeah. Has any of that been, because a lot of it's abandonware, has none of it been made for, available yet? Um, for Windows, a lot. Okay. For Mac, a little bit. For Linux, pfft. Right. Also, <laughs> they only have DMC floss palettes, and I use wool, and there's um, Anchor, and there's a few other manufacturers, so there's not really a lot of point when you still have to do a whole lot of manual, tedious post-processing to the automation software, so I made it a thing. Hello. Hey. Um, so you mentioned earlier that the, the output from the... Um, your software it looked a bit like a GIF. Uh, I have no idea how you would actually physically do this, but could you do animated GIFs? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, you want animated cross-stitch charts? I'm sure it's possible. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so, so, if you were to take, you know how I was talking about the 10 count and the 16 count and stuff? If you reduced that down further, used a single bit of cotton, made really tiny ones and put them together in a flip book. <laughs> yeah, or you could just draw a flip book. <laughs> there, there's a project done with knitting. 
uh, that does that. Um, it's called The Horse in Motion. I'll, I'll put it out on Twitter, but it was in my talk last year where this guy broke an animated gift down, knitted it on a hack knitting machine into a strip 12 meters long, and then re-photographed each frame and reanimated it <laughs> of the horse running. So I'll share that. I'll share that. Run. What? Just do that. Just take a whole bunch and re-photograph them. Yeah, but, but it's a slippy. Hello, Katie. I'm here. Hi. <laughs> um, I'd like to map my colours based on natural sheep's colours. So you've got to show every colour of hair, apart from the dyed ones, every colour of hair, you can find a, a sheep or an alpaca in my case, um, that's got that colour. And it would be lovely to have a palette. And then you could say, use all these scans. It's much reduced compared to the DMC colours. What would I do to go about making my palette? OK, so the 626 that I have defaults to wool. But because this is an open source conference, it does accept floss. So <laughs> you can, I have two colour palettes already encoded into the system. If you can work out the RGB equivalent, you can create your own palette, send that in as a variable into when you execute it, and it will just work. You just need to get the original data, so you need to go around with like a colour matching swatch and a alpaca farm. So if you can do that... She's got one. You have an alpaca farm? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we need to talk, because we can totally make this work. So, so by the end of today, or this week, 626 will be able to accept wool, floss, and alpaca. <laughs> how, do you, how many yaks do you need to shave to get a skin of floss? <laughs> I'm not sure whether that's a rhetorical, like, sort of mantra? Because... Can we cross stitch it? <laughs> what we can do is we can create the design and we can automate the knitting thing with the lovely lady who did yes. the thing and then we can do the thing, yeah. For next year. For next... No! I'm not <laughs> saying I will do... Okay, apart from the alpaca thing, I'm not going to say that I'm going to do any project for another year because you know my, how my estimations work, gosh. Thank you very much. Yay! Yay.